week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt Deville with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Danny Swift Garcia. Get this. Danny Garcia on Terrence Crawford. He said, that's a big fight. We have history. He needs somebody like me. Wow. Danny Garcia believes his drawing ability should behoove a certain welterweight champion from Omaha, Nebraska to consider him for a fight. In, recent, in a recent interview, Garcia, the two-division world title holder from Philadelphia, offered what may be his most enthusiastic reception to the idea of fighting Terrence Crawford. He, hold, he holds the WBO <clears throat> welterweight crown. Crawford is, is a currently a free agent as his contract with longtime promoter Top Rank ended la last November after Crawford's 10-round knockout of Sean Porter in Las Vegas. The 34-year-old Garcia has not fought since his unanimous decision loss to Errol Spence, which was in December of 2020. So he is not necessarily looking to fight Crawford in his next bout. But afterwards, he is apparently game. He said, not next, okay? But that's a big fight. We have history. And I feel like he, he needs somebody like me. Now, let me counter punch. Um, Garcia, they have history. They're supposed to fall in the amateurs. I think Garcia beat him in the amateurs, and then he beat Garcia in the amateurs. I think they're one and one. I think I could be wrong. That may be Mikey Garcia, but I think that was Danny. But I can tell you this to be a fact. Angel Garcia did not want his son anywhere near Terrence Crawford. Okay, The migration from 135 to 140 with Danny Garcia, and then when Crawford went to 140, they soon left to 147, while Crawford took every belt at 140. Then he came to 147, or before, right before he came to 147, his father was saying derogatory, really racial slurs, saying he's like blue, black, and this, that, and the other. We don't need him, this, that, you know, showing, showing us all that he didn't want his son nowhere near uh, Terrence Crawford. And Danny got a bad rap because I think he was mismanaged by his father because he didn't want to fight the big fights. And the fights that he did he did have, like the Lamont Peterson fight, uh, he had a close fight in Puerto Rico when he went there where he got busted up real bad. Um, I forget the fighter's name, but Danny Garcia, I felt, should should have lost that fight. He should have, but he didn't, <laughs> you know, because I think he was in Puerto Rico or whatnot. But he is a tough customer. He can crack. He's been beat by some of the best guys there. Um, I would like to see the fight because of the history that I, of, the, of the mismanagement from Danny Garcia's side. But honestly, why would Terrence Crawford want to fight Danny Garcia? I mean, let's think about it. Why would he want to? Because he, he was, he's been beaten by everybody that was anybody. I mean, let's face it. First loss to Keith Thurman. It was a pretty good fight. Second loss to Sean Porter. Third loss to Errol Spence. Everyone else that he's beat, Ivan Redcash, casual. You know, Adrian Granados. He wasn't even a 140-pounder. Uh, Brandon Rios knocked him out cold also. Again, you know what I mean? Really past his prime, I think. I don't ever want to see Brandon Rios in the ring again. <laughs> Samuel Vargas, journeyman. Robert Guerrero, you know what I mean? That was a decent fight. Paula Malinaji took him out. Lamont Peterson, I think Peterson beat him. Rod Salka, who the hell is that? He was known for not being anybody. That made him somebody. Mauricio Herrera, that's the guy that I think beat him on a majority decision in Puerto Rico. Lucas Matisse was probably his best win, okay? That and Zab Judah coming up. Eric Morales was way too old. You know what I mean? Amir Khan, that was his prop between Amir Khan and, and Lucas Matisse was his two best wins. Now, does he have a resume? He does. But other fighters that he should have fought, he didn't fight for a very long time. I mean, it took him literally two or three years 
It took him three years to fight someone like Keith Thurman. And that was back when Keith Thurman was screaming, you better not duck me, son. You better not duck me, son. That particular Keith Thurman. Okay, and Keith Thurman took the, that belt, the WBC belt, from Danny Garcia. Good fight. Uh, I remember watching it. Very entertaining fight. But Keith Thurman was just too much for him. Okay, so, but again, every time he stepped up, he's come up short. Okay, and that's Porter, Spence, Thurman. He has three losses. You know, so it's kind of like, OK, well, you know, you want Terrence Crawford, though. What does what do you have to offer Terrence Crawford? You're not a champion. You've been beaten by the best people. Matter of fact, you got beat by the guy that he stopped. Now, the only thing would get me about this fight would be for one. Angel Garcia, because he knows how to talk trash. For two, Danny Garcia has never been stopped in a fight, and let alone been dropped in a fight. So it'd be interested, this, interesting to see if Terrence Crawford could, could stop uh, Danny Garcia. And if he could stop Danny Garcia, and Errol Spence couldn't, Keith Thurman couldn't, Sean Porter couldn't, that just puts another tr uh, trend set on the resume of Terrence Crawford, okay? But is it a waste of time? Mm. People could view that, and I really wouldn't argue with them. But would I want to see it as a boxing fan? Of course I would, because Danny Garcia can punch. He has a puncher's chance. He can crack hard. He's a hooker, you know, and Terrence Crawford loves to get in exchanges when you piss him off. Okay, so I think it would come down to the styles of those two guys and see how those guys can match up now in the pros but anyway you guys tell me what you think of danny garcia cryptically calling out terrence bud crawford of course please subscribe and you guys been counterpunch peace